There's two things to learn from traveling. Cheeseburgers aren't always what you think they are, and beetles don't taste half bad. I'm often asked if my international travels are because my parents are in the military or if I constantly go on mission trips, but my family uses traveling as a tool for learning, to peek in the world of others through their eyes. On one of my first major trips, my family and I traveled to India because my dad had previously gone for business and decided to take us along. We stayed for about two months, which at the time seemed very long, but looking back at it, it really wasn't enough time at all. I had just turned six years old and graduated kindergarten when I found out I'd be traveling to India. My initial thought was excitement, just because as a kid, you're excited to get out of the house and learn something new that you've never seen before. As we arrived in India, there were no road lines, many rickshaws, and many, many cows roaming the streets, but I was a bit confused why. As my dad went off to work and my mom went to the traditional Indian mud bath, my brother and I were in the hands of our driver, Umesh, who showed us around the local areas throughout the week. As kids, my brother and I weren't really as interested in seeing the tourist attractions and we just wanted to have fun. Umesh often asked us if he wanted anything, and let's just say we had a lot of orange fan of that trip. Umesh then took our family to Mahableshwar, which is a town in India with many mountains and forests. As we were driving up, we had stopped. You would never believe what was outside of our car window. Monkeys. Umesh told us not to be worried because this is quite a normal occurrence in, in India. And although I was nervous, I continued on. We then continued to pick strawberries, although we might have eaten a bit more than we picked, and continued on to resort where we enjoyed the Indian amusement park, zoo, and water park. I begged my dad to let me go on the merry-go-round. As he paid for me, I hopped on, and the man just started pushing it around and around until I was going fast enough. I realized that all these rides were manual and not mechanical, so this made it all the more fun, just because you can control how fast you go. Afterwards, my brother and I spent most of our time playing arcade games at the hotel and going to the water park. As we went to the water park, it was monsoon season, so it made it much more fun and slippery. And as we were sliding down, the water and wind hit our face and we, we stayed all throughout the evening. The next morning, we woke up to go to a very important person's house, Gandhi. And Umesh told us that Gandhi's house was turned into a museum, so you could walk through and see how he lived. It was through this house that I learned Gandhi was a simple and neat man who didn't really need much to spread his impact on others. But afterwards, we were quite hungry, so we decided to get a bite to eat. I was skimming through the menu, and I decided I would get a cheeseburger. I also got a mango lassi, which is a bit like a mango smoothie. As the food arrived, I noticed, unlike the traditional American burger, with meat, cheese, lettuce, and tomato, mine was just cheese. This is when I realized, in the Hindu religion, that the cow is sacred, which is why when I arrived, many of the cows were just roaming the streets, and why my cheeseburger was quite literally a cheeseburger. <laughs> Later that day, uh, my stomach started hurting, and I realized that in my mango lassi, the water was contaminated, but I still did not regret drinking the sweet, creamy mango lassi. The last day, we indulged in some treats Umesh's wife made for us and watched some Indian shows on the television. And although I did many of the things that I would have done in the United States, I was able to learn that people with vastly different cultures and ideals are very much similar to one another. And when people travel, they tend to notice the differences between their culture and others, but the subtle similarities are the real treasures. A couple of years later, I traveled to China. Over the next couple of days, we, went, we visited Shanghai, Beijing, the Great Wall of China, and the Jade Factory. As we walked around, many of the people thought we were celebrities because the Karate Kid movie was recently filmed and President Obama was in office. So they weren't really used to seeing many people that looked like us. We were stopped to take a lot of pictures, and this was quite fun, not only because they seemed genuinely happy to meet us, but they also were happy to share their culture with us. I remember specifically we were walking through a garden and we saw a woman drawing on the concrete Chinese letters and symbols with what seemed to look like a broomstick with a paintbrush material on the end. As we walked closer, we asked our interpreter, Mark, to ask the lady if we could try. She let us try, and about 30 seconds later, a group of Chinese people surrounded us and watched what we were doing. Although it might have been because we looked like celebrities, I like to think it was because 
they're happy to share their culture with us. The next day began with learning how to make silk sheets and snowballed into eating live silkworms. Although this, is what, although this is not what I'm typically used to eating, I still decided to give it a chance. I like to think of it as a bug sashimi, but I couldn't really get over the crunchy, gooey sensation of the bug. Nevertheless, this was quite the experience, and I'll never forget it. Later that night, we traveled to Wafujing Street, which is a street where Chinese vendors and many people came to eat the many different foods that they made. As you walked around, there's many things that no one would think to see in their lives, such as beetles, seahorse, crickets, and snake. I thought to try the crickets first, just because I was a bit nervous to try it, and I thought it would be the easiest to stomach. It tasted like a crunchy piece of chicken, and I ended up loving it. So I decided to keep eating other foods. I tried the seahorse and snake. I even tried the crickets another time, <laughs> and I tried the scorpion. But this, mm, it really wasn't my favorite. Many of the people were surprised to see us eating these foods because we were tourists, and many of the tourists aren't really typically eating these foods. So this opened up a new perspective to them about Americans. The next day, we went and we traveled to the lesser visited parts in China, where most of the locals don't really get out of the area that much are. We were invited into a local person's house, had tea, and our interpreter, Mark, talked to them about what it was like to live in the United States and what their life was like in China. Just think, how many of you would be open to sharing your home to a complete stranger who didn't speak the language? None of you, right? Exactly. But this showed me that although they had a different culture, they were completely open to sharing it. And it also taught me to be open to new things in my future and traveling endeavors, but also in my life in the United States. At the end of the day, traveling gave me three skills, surrounding cultural understanding, working with others, and being able to go outside of my comfort zone. How are we gonna be able to solve the problems the world faces if we can't have cultural understanding, empathy, or solving solutions outside of our comfort zone? Traveling is a means for you to become a better person and understand the world to a greater extent. If you've ever thought to travel, or go to, a, or go to a new city, state, or country, go. Or when your fifth cousin gets married in Turkey, take the leap of faith and go. Thank you.